Hello Year 10. Today we're going to be starting your first coursework module, Unit R111, and this is going to be all about computer-aided manufacturing. We're going to be designing one of these wheels in Autodesk Inventor, and we're going to be using the CNC router to machine a small batch. In order to do this, we're going to have to design one of these wheels, which we'll be doing following this guide. We can then export it, and we're going to produce all of the surrounding documentation. Today's lesson is going to be all about creating this wheel and creating enough evidence to fill your record of manufacture. To do this, we're going to use Autodesk Inventor, so if you haven't already, please double click the Inventor icon on the desktop and wait for it to load. Please only do this once, as Inventor is such a big program, if you click too many times, it's going to crash your computer. While you're waiting for Inventor to load, please open PowerPoint and we're going to be starting a new blank document. You can call it CAD Evidence and your name and we're going to use this just to dump everything in. I will then help you organise it into a more thorough document when I get back after half term. This is the wheel we're going to be making. It's quite a simple design. Flat underneath and then hollowed out on the top and we've got all of these little rounded edges too and we've got a hub in the middle for our axle and then we've got five lightening holes. I'm going to be showing you how to make this to a set size in a very specific way so please follow these instructions carefully. There may be quicker ways to make the same design but you won't get as many marks because this has the right number of processes. This will be the drawing that you should have printed in front of you. This has all of the crucial dimensions for the wheel, such as the overall diameter, which is 40 millimeters, the thickness, which is 18, and so on. We're now gonna start a new inventor document by going up to new, and then standard.ipt. At this stage, we're gonna take our first screenshot. If you press the print screen button on your keyboard and then go into your PowerPoint document. On a new slide, right click and paste the picture. Now would be a good time to shrink it down to a suitable size. At this stage you should also write a little annotation just so we know what is going on. And you can do this by inserting a text box. We can make a note here saying that we are starting a new document, a new part document in Autodesk. Be as descriptive as you can with all of your annotations, it'll help you when we start the next stage. Have a new blank slide ready to go as soon as you've uh, finished your first slide. We'll go back into Inventor, make sure you've got Standard or IPT selected, and then we go down to Create. And it will load up a brand new file ready for us to make our wheel. At this stage, we're just going to make sure that we've got the units correct in our document. We're going to go to Tools and Document Settings, making sure our units are not in inches, but in millimeters. At this stage, we're going to print screen again, and we'll put another print screen into our PowerPoint. For now, leave the entire screen on there. We can trim this down and crop it when we come to doing it, our proper document later on. Again, insert another text box and put a little annotation. This will help you remember what you've been doing when you come back next lesson. Make sure you save what you're doing. And call your folder cab evidence. Go back into Inventor, making sure the length unit is in millimeters. You can apply it and close. The next stage will be to start a new sketch which will be done like so. 
Once again, now is a great time for another print screen. Back into PowerPoint. And we'll add this one in instead. Again, we'll have a new annotation. This is going to be the last print screen that I take. However, every step of the way, I want you to continue with this process. I'm now going to run through the rest of the video without taking any more of these screen grabs, but I want you to be doing it so you can document every step of the way. You really cannot do this too much. We're going to use all of these to collate them into your evidence folder. So the more photos and screen grabs you get, the more evidence you're going to have to back up your coursework. So going back to Inventor, we can now choose any one of these planes. I'm going to start off on the YZ plane, and you'll then get into this section here where you'll see the cross in the middle of your page. This shows that you're in sketch mode. As soon as you're in this sketch mode, you'll have all of these options along the top bar. To begin with, we're going to draw a circle, making sure that we have the center point circle selected. This might be a good time to get a screenshot. I'm then going to take my cursor and place it in the center of the cross. Notice the dot will go green. You can click, drag out the circle, and click again. We are now going to check the document. You'll have this printed. I've got it on my screen. And I know that the overall diameter is going to be 40 millimeters. So we go up to the dimension tool. You click it. Click on the outside of the circle. If you hover over, it'll go white. Just click move your mouse and click again and you'll be able to edit the dimension and change it to 40 millimeters at this stage if you need to zoom out you can use the scroll wheel on your mouse so that you can see all of the circle again this is probably a good time to have a screenshot click the finish sketch tick and that will remove you from sketch mode you can then go up to where it says 3d model and you bring up the 3D model ribbon. Click on extrude, and notice your circle should now start to become 3D. If it doesn't, just click on the circle, and it should look like this. Again, another good chance for a screen grab. We're now gonna set the distance here to 18 millimeters, which is the overall thickness of our wheel. So we go back into Inventor, change the size to 18 millimeters and then you can click the little green tick to complete at this stage it's a good time to show you how to move around a 3d model in inventor you can either use this little cube at the top if you click on any of the faces it'll snap right to that face you can also have an isometric view by clicking on the corner of the cube we can then go down to this tool here the free orbit tool you can then click and drag and view it from any angle that you like by moving the mouse. I'm going to snap it back to an isometric view for now by clicking on the top corner of the cube. The next stage is going to be to draw our hole in the center of our circle. To do this, we go back up to sketch and start a new 2D sketch. Then we're going to click on this face at the front of our wheel. As soon as you do that, it goes back into sketch mode with the cross. Every time you see this cross, we are in sketch mode. Once again, another good time to get a screenshot. We're going to go back to circle, making sure it's still the center point circle. And we're going to click in the very center of our wheel and drag. If we go back to our drawing, we can see that the center hole here is five millimeters in diameter. So this little symbol here means diameter. If we go back to dimension, click on our circle and drag. We'll now change this to five millimeters and you can either press enter or click the green tick. Again, good time for a screenshot as we go to finish sketch. It'll go back into the 3D model view 
and we need to go back up to this 3D model tab. To remove material, we use the extrude tool again. This time though, we make sure we go down to the middle option down here, this one. If you hover over it, it should come up with cut. But if you click it, you'll see it's now taking material away from the center of the wheel. Again, good time for a screenshot and in your annotation, make a note that you are cutting away by 18 millimeters. This is so the hole goes all the way through the center of the wheel. If we now use the pre orbit tool, we can have a little look around and we can see that yes, our hole has gone all the way through and we've done that perfectly. The next stage is gonna be done using the shell tool. This is gonna hollow out the top side of our wheel. If we click shell and then the top of our wheel, we then get this dimension pop up here. This is gonna be the thickness of our shell. So this will be how thick the piece left behind will be. If we go onto our drawing, we can see that the distance between one side of the shell and the other is four millimeters. So we can go back into Inventor. There we go. And we type in four millimeters. And then again, press the tick. Another good opportunity for a screen grab, making sure you show the options set to four millimeters. And now you can see that our wheel is really starting to come together. We've got the right basic shape. The next stage is going to be adding in our five lightening holes. To do this, we go to start a new sketch and we press the start 2D sketch button. And we want to draw on the inside face of our wheel. As before, the cross appears to show we're in sketch mode. And this time we're gonna start with a line. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see what we're doing here. We're gonna use this center line on our cross that we've already got. I'm gonna click at the top of this circle and go all the way up until we get to the inside of this circle in a straight line. Should be nine and a half millimeters long. And you click. We then go back to our center point circle and we go on to this green line we've just created. You'll notice as your mouse gets near, the little yellow dot snaps onto the line. As you get closer and closer to the middle of the line, eventually, just like that, the dot will go green. Click then, drag out to create your circle. If you look at your drawing, you'll see that each one of these circles is also five millimeters in diameter. So we use dimension, and select five millimeters. Again, a really good time to get a screenshot and annotation. The next stage is to copy this circle and evenly space it five times around the wheel. To do this, we are gonna use the circular pattern tool. Click on the tool and you can now select the geometry. This is the shape that we want to copy. So geometry means the shape we want to copy. Click on the first circle here. It'll turn white when you can select it. Then go and click on this red arrow here that says axis. And we wanna click in the very center of your wheel. We then want to change this number, the number of times it's repeated to five. As soon as you've done that, you can click OK. You'll notice we've now got five identical holes all equally spaced apart on the wheel. This is a very good time to have another screenshot. As soon as you've got all five circles evenly spaced around your wheel, click Finish Sketch. We are then going to extrude these in exactly the same way as we did for the first hole. We go to Extrude. Making sure we've got the profile arrow selected, we can then click in the center of each circle. But we do not want to generate material, we want to cut away, which we click like so. You can then click OK. 
and you should now see that you've got five holes cut out that go all the way through your wheel. If they don't go all the way through, just check the distance you've set it to extrude by. If it's trying to extrude out and make material, just make sure you go back and select cut so it removes it instead. The last stage is going to be to fill it and round off each of the edges. To do this, we are going to use the fillet tool. If we go back to our first drawing, we can see that the edges up here are filleted, the edge on our little hub in the middle is filleted, and the one right at the inside. And if we look at our drawing down here, we've got a radius of one millimetre. So we've got a one millimetre fillet on our wheel. So first, if we go and change our radius to one, where it says zero selected, we'll just click there. And now we can select each of the lines and the edges we want to fill it. It'll be this outside one here, the inside one here, this one on the hub, and this edge right in the center. So you should have four edges selected with a radius of one millimeter. As soon as you've got that, click OK. And there we have it. It really is as simple as that. By now, you should have plenty of slides of evidence, lots of screenshots every step of the way, lots of annotation. If you finish this, have a go at using the Revolve tool in sketch mode to create another version of the wheel. If you do that, please document it every step of the way. Next lesson, we will look at creating evidence using dimension drawings and creating nice neat renders of this wheel. All that's left to do is save your work as an inventor part file and save it as wheel design and then your name. In future lessons, we will look at how we export this to work with the CNC router. We'll also look at simulating the cutting on the router before creating, as I said before, our dimension drawings and our renders for our folders. If you finish this early, as I said before, have a go at using the Revolve tool and document your evidence with that as well, as it will be worth extra marks. Thank you, Year 10. Good luck. I'll see you soon.